Mexico City is a massive expanse of a city and is infamous for being the most populous metropolis in North America. This massive city is sinking fast under its own weight and has already sunk too low to be saved. Here are the details. A new study published in the journal JGR Solid Earth reports that Mexico City is sinking at an unstoppable rate, with some parts sinking up to 50 centimeters per year over the past few decades. The massive city was built on a dry lake bed that contains water aquifers which have held up the city in the past, but centuries of pumping water from these aquifers have made them so empty that the surrounding clay sheets are cracking and compressing. If the rate of sinking continues, it would lead to the contamination of drinking water for the city's 21 million people. More than three quarters of the city's drinking water comes from wells that extract water from the ground and continue to deplete its aquifers. Experts first noticed the sinking in 1900 when subsidence was recorded to be about 9 centimeters a year. Drilling for groundwater wasn't capped until the late 1950s, by which time the city was sinking at a rate of 28 centimeters a year. This cap initially slowed the rate of subsidence, but the sinking accelerated again as the city's population and buildings increased exponentially. Geotechnical engineer Eddie Bromhead from Kingston University of London told The Guardian, If you put heavy buildings on that kind of ground and used shallow foundations, the soil compacts. So that, along with removing the water, is why Mexico City is such a mess. If you like learning about large cities and their challenges, here are some more videos about that. President Joko Widodo has announced plans to shift Indonesia's capital city from Jakarta to the province of East Kalimantan on Borneo Island. The Jakarta Post reports that part of the new capital will be in the province's North Penajam Pasir Regency, while the other half will be in the Kutai Kartanegara Regency. The region was chosen for being relatively free from earthquakes and volcanoes. According to Reuters, Indonesia plans to relocate from its current capital, Jakarta, as the city is overpopulated and faces severe congestion. The Guardian reports Jakarta is also sinking 10 to 20 centimeters per year due to severe land subsidence. The Indonesian government said it wants to build a smart, green city. A government official was quoted by the South China Morning Post as saying that they would not disturb any existing protected forest, as the island is filled with tropical rainforests. If President Widodo's plan is approved by the Indonesian parliament, the new capital will begin construction across a plot of about 40,000 hectares next year. In a televised speech, the Indonesian president said that the location is strategic and explained that the shift would ease Jakarta's burden as the center of business, finance, trade, and government. Italian architectural firm Stefano Boeri Architetti has unveiled design plans for a smart forest city in Cancun. According to the architectural firm's website, the site would consist of 400 hectares of green space and feature public parks and private gardens. The smart forest city would contain green roofs and more than 200,000 trees that would be able to absorb approximately 116,000 tons of carbon dioxide. The company explained that the area would be surrounded by a ring of solar panels and agricultural fields to provide renewable energy and food for the city. The development's agricultural fields would be irrigated by a water channel connected to an underwater maritime pipe. The site would use electric and semi-automatic vehicles instead of traditional vehicles for both residents and visitors. Visitors to the forest city would be required to leave their traditional vehicles at the city's outer edge. According to Stefano Boeri Architetti, the development would house an advanced research center for international organizations and companies that are interested in our planet's sustainability issues. The proposed plan would reforest the area and build a smart forest city instead of a shopping district. Imagine this, a fully automated floating city, free from government meddling, with no laws, regulations, or taxes. Once just a libertarian fantasy, it's now just a few years from becoming reality. On January 13th, French Polynesia agreed to host the world's first floating city, or seastead, within its protected waters. The seastead aims to be a special economic zone that will develop innovative technologies for solar power, aquaculture, and wind energy. Design-wise, the floating city will consist of interconnected square and pentagonal platforms made from reinforced concrete. Platforms will have a variety of structures, from residential and commercial to green spaces, with pricing per square foot on par with major cities like New York or London. The project's initial islands will cost a combined total estimated at $10 million to $50 million and will house a few dozen people. With rising sea levels threatening many Pacific islands, Seastead advocates believe floating cities may be a solution. 
The presence of floating communities could also spark recovery for the region's dying corals by slightly lowering water temperatures in their vicinity. The Seasteading Institute will have to complete environmental and economic feasibility studies, but construction on the project could start as early as next year. U.S.-based architectural firm Adrian Smith and Gordon Gill has won a competition to design Nanjing's newest skyscraper, the South Hexi Yuzui Financial District Tower. According to the project website, the tower's design plans were inspired by the Yangtze River. The 500-meter-tall building will be able to reflect light, just like the Chinese River, while its exterior will be made up of efficient glass to reduce the amount of solar heat that enters the building. The architectural firm states that the building will incorporate eco-friendly features such as multiple green spaces and a harvest rainwater from its sky gardens. The structure aims to become one of the tallest buildings to achieve LEED Gold certification when completed in 2025. The tower will include an open-air observatory with a 360-degree view of the city. In addition to the super-tall skyscraper, the company will also design other smaller office towers and residential towers as part of a larger development in the district. The new financial district will have access to the riverfront, public transportation, public parks, and other facilities. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.